it, it appears to be an internal email, but uh, it has consequences now because uh, the governor of Nairobi has revoked licenses uh, for all Chandarana food plus supermarkets following claims of racial bias. Now, in a text message to newsroom, Sonko has therefore ordered his county officers to ensure enforcement of the shutdown starting today. Now, Gladys Bostrole is also a lawyer. Yes, he has served as, uh, in the judiciary for a long time and will be talking about those issues as well. Mm. But uh, an internal email, because mm. it could be part of a business strategy for any business and uh, mm. communication between one part of the company to another. Once that is leaked, can it be used against the company? Because mm. this is not official communication to the public. Mm. Mm. Uh, this is just an internal email. Can it be used against the company? Mm. I think maybe we start from this way. Um, first of all, the decision to actually revoke the licenses of a huge company like that has very serious repercussions. Mm -hmm. You could end up being hit by a huge bill for damages. So the most important thing is to first prove that there was in fact racism and there are institutions in this country, in fact there's an independent commission that deals with such issues. Mm -hmm. And so you're better off having received the, the decision by those particular institutions before you take the action. And remember, my reading of that uh, email is, um, I think whoever wrote the email put, didn't put, was not, did not use politically correct words. Yes. But it looks like what it meant is that uh, we want to go to a certain target market. Sometimes, I think if yourselves in the media, you have your C, B, A class or yes. whatever you call them. I, and most businesses yes, there's do that. up market, yes. you're, you're going for medium, middle class, or you're going for low income groups. I think that is what they meant, but they used the wrong word. Mm -hmm. Which political is not a good word to use. So I think it's about, they must learn to use the correct uh, terminologies. And I think that is what has caused the APRO. But, but when it's communication within the company, because mm -hmm. it's from one manager to another, uh, mm -hmm. can that be used outside of that uh, circle? Uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, if, because probably we decided, and if it's on WhatsApp mm -hmm. messages, mm -hmm. that we can talk this way. Yes. Uh, can that mm -hmm. be used against the company, uh, probably uh, in court? Can that email be used against the company in court? No. Or, even, I or even in that process that you say that someone has to check if at all there was racism? I think what could I, it can only be used to re ask the company to account for its policies mm -hmm. and give an explanation that they in fact do not uh, discriminate against people of a certain color. So you can use that as a basis to ask the, the company, mm -hmm. not to shut down the company. Yes. Remember the company also hires a lot of Kenyans. We know that our em unemployment rate is extremely high in this country. You don't want to take chances shutting down a company until you're sure yes. that they in fact have actually committed an offense. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do and have an offence that warrants uh -huh. shutting down. I'd say that uh, Emilio Diambo, uh, MP Suba North, will be joining us. She's finally made it to studio. Karibu sana. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, really. Come late. <laughs> Karibu. Uh, Thank you. Madam Speaker, uh, your governor has gone ahead and shut down uh, supermarket, this supermarket now. Do you think it's a rash decision? Uh, because uh, according to uh, Mushimi Oshule, it's there, there should be some processes to actually determine if at all there was wrongdoing. Uh, because the kind of accusations that are being made are a bit serious. Do you think it was a rash decision or do you think that the governor uh, simply by reacting to Kenyans' concerns that this supermarket uh, could be uh, racist uh, is, is valid enough a reason to actually sh uh, deny them licenses? I think there are two things I'll pick around it and one uh, I'm hoping his advisors because there's no way the governor will just get something and do it. He has advisors who and uh, to advise him legally that uh, while we are going to do this, this is uh, what happens within uh, the law and uh, we are going to have repercussions in terms of our revenue, in terms of also finding our same people having challenges. So for me, I want to ask, did the advisors advise him correctly? And number two, yes, it brings in a bell because I think we are having a lot of uh, foreigners also uh, playing so much with Kenyans and uh, I don't want to say Chandarana. I think Chandarana has been here for a while. When I read the email, uh, as, as um, when you read it, uh, you, and you will think it's either, it doesn't talk about racism, so you know you'll have a lot of challenges in uh, proving you are talking about racism. It's like your branding and where your brand is going is going where we have a lot of white people uh, when you read the, uh, in the lines yes. of that. Uh, but then the question will be, who hacked 
and gave it out. So also Chandarana has to ask itself, were they going to do racism? And that is why it was hacked mm -hmm. and given out. Because he, he, to, for them to look for the governor also, the workers inside maybe felt we are being uh, persecuted, persecuted but, it, but we are unable rushed, to talk about it. A rushed it. political decision just to play to the masses because the complaints were mainly on social media and that is what uh, the governor probably was reacting to and decided, okay, fine, uh, let me just revoke the licenses for him to appear like he's doing something. For me now, I don't know when he received the letter. So I, won't, I don't know whether he rushed or not because I also don't know. Did he receive the letter yesterday mm -hmm. or was it given within, within the week and then he decided... Let me now do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping he's still uh, also following up and whoever gave him the email can give him more information because mm -hmm. he has to now stand in and support mm -hmm. uh, most of the workers who are at Chandarana mm -hmm. who might get into trouble with this. Because nowadays it's very easy. Anyone is just going to hack and know mm -hmm. the document was done on this computer and so who was on that computer at this hour. So whoever did it has to just know. And running on your screens right now is uh, that email. Uh, they are running a, a campaign, a promotional campaign targeting whites only according to the wording of the email and i think that's the biggest concern it's the wording milio the you're also a lawyer and uh, this matter probably could end up in the courts but uh, if a company decides to target a uh, male 26 year old male of caucasian a uh, caucasian male and use the word caucasian probably would it have uh, caused uh, the kind of ruckus we're seeing right now because probably it's the use of the word white and uh, we are not all conversant with the uh, use of uh, English language uh, some people have coming from India, some are coming from uh, I think Moranga. it's an Indian who did that. Yeah, <laughs> and some coming, coming from Moranga. It's, it's just a choice of words. If at all, uh, because we all target different markets. And uh, even media sometimes say you target the 21-year-old female from an urban center. Yes? Uh, if at all the wording was different and not using the word white. Well, let me say that um, um, I think uh, when you are talking about when you are wedding in the area of discrimination, you have to uh, circle the word exclusion. So if you went to court, then what you'll be looking at is uh, was their wording excluding others, mm -hmm. uh, either directly or indirectly. And uh, I think really we don't have, because there are certain parameters that you look at when you are talking at about the issue of discrimination. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be something that would have to, to be proven in court. Yes. However, what, one thing I would want to say is that uh, uh, for the supermarkets and for you to see actually an employee coming forward and leaking, it means that there are certain practices that they always see mm -hmm. that uh, has raised you know, question marks for them. Uh, just last week, uh, somebody shared with me, and I actually also saw a bit in the uh, online about supermarkets in Migori uh, that uh, are also said to uh, target uh, African women mm -hmm. and uh, force them to leave their handbags. You know, the small ba yes. handbags. That's a very mm -hmm. intimate yes. uh, thing for for women. That's where you carry everything, including tampons mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things that you don't want to share with everybody else. So w instead of then enhancing their security, you tell women to leave their handbags. You know, if you carry something pretty mm -hmm. big, then you can leave. But a handbag is like telling a man to leave his tie, mm -hmm. you know. So I think we must be very careful when we are in business, when we engage in business, that we do not do acts that are either discriminatory or seen to be discriminatory. Mm -hmm. But I would also want to ask the governor that one of the things that he needs to learn to do now is to work with a seasoned lawyer next to him. He's not, he's not vying to be the governor, he's the governor. Mm -hmm. And the governor role is an executive role. It's not a legislative role where you can say things and, and sort of get away with it. His actions have monetary implications, mm -hmm. especially for the county government, you know, of Nairobi. And he can, uh, what he meant for good may end up actually boomeranging, boomeranging on him yes. because he may be sued. He, he has no mandate to stop licenses based on discrimination that he has no mandate to determine. Yes. So I think he was wrong. He was, uh, if I would quote uh, PLO, that he was using a, a hammer to, to kill a mosquito. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. uh, back to the issue of, uh, mm. you, you say there's a very thin line between exclusion and business strategy because mm. uh, as a business, you need to know your market and you need, and is it wrong to target a particular 
section of this market. Is it wrong probably to say I only target uh, people who go to universities uh, and if at all you're not a graduate, uh, that you're not my main target. Probably I, I'm not looking for people who have, do, have not gotten to that level of education. Mm -hmm. Is it wrong? No, it's not wrong. And I think businesses do it all over. I think Citizen does it in your marketing and in your targeting your audience. I think even that's why you have different TV stations. Mm -hmm. Inora will probably be targeting uh, a certain group of people. Uh, you'll find that Chamge FM will be mm -hmm. targeting a certain group of people. Uh, some of them, the music that you play, when you look at Classic FM and uh, Capital FM, it's, it's the, it's a, they, they have a t different target audience. And that's why I said here was a poor choice of words that has angered Kenyans. And Kenyans are right in being angry about it because, I mean, we've never been a racist country and we do not want to entertain that. So I like the fact that Kenyans reacted to it. It means that they abhor racism. Yes. And that is a good point that has been made by Kenyans yes. on the social media. The only thing is that you wouldn't expect that um, uh, someone who's chief executive for Nairobi County uh, should react very quickly. I think he'd be slow in acting. He may be right, he may not be right. I just think uh, shutting, uh, taking away a license, uh, I think you can only take someone's license, cancel someone's license on certain grounds, I, either on health grounds mm -hmm. or they have substandard goods. You know, there's a whole array of regulations on what actions and what failures can arise in your license being taken mm -hmm. away. It is not because you have decided one day or you're annoyed by something that has been yes. said. So I think for me it's that process that is very important. Mm -hmm. Establishing that there was in fact racism mm -hmm. is the job of an independent commission established under the constitution. Let them do their job, give a report. At that point, yes. with that report, then the governor can take whatever actions He's a, he's allowed by law. So it appears only, the governor, after, only yes. after due process. It yes. appears your governor, uh, the governor of the, uh, the uh, city of Nairobi is actually in some sort of trouble with this. Uh, well, but allow me to put you on the spot <laughs> because uh, the, the county assembly's main role is to actually legislate and also oversight uh, on the county government. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a matter that the county assembly of Nairobi should take up? The fact that uh, the governor of Nairobi seems to have taken up upon himself to actually make a rash decision to deny a business, a legitimate business uh, licenses? Well, you know, already the county assembly has done its job. That's why they have licenses. And therefore, we cannot go back on now a case that I know is going to be a criminal case or a case in court to say that we would want to deal with it. Or else someone brings a petition mm -hmm. and tells us why this leaked out. We have a petition. Indeed, we are going through such discriminations in terms of our job, in terms of how they, you, you know, the biggest challenge, as I'm much as we about the issue of licensing. Business, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, let, let me just can, say, can, can someone pick up a uh, complaint probably through the county assembly? Yes, uh -huh. you can, mm -hmm. you can, you can come. And if maybe uh, the, the executive is uh, also threatening you and uh, harassing you, you will come to the county assembly and say, we have a license, mm -hmm. but we've been threatened because maybe our paint is not this and we are forced mm -hmm. to do. So there are many also other procedures in terms of I've given you a license and this license is supposed to do one, two, three. And maybe the city Ascaris will come every day, they harass you. Then you have a right to come and give a, your petition and mm -hmm. say, I'm being harassed on one, two, three. Okay. But then also to look at the other flip, because we might start this and you'll find now a lot of issues coming out. We have to now understand. I have seen in many of the supermarkets, we have very many Asians who are the ones who are even near the teller and all. I think those are jobs that Kenyans must do. Well, we need to ask ourselves as Kenyans, what job of expertise do this person bring mm -hmm. in, 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 in the job now that is there? Is it a job that a Kenyan can do? And I think that is the challenge we are facing, not just at Chandarana supermarket, I can see also in many hospitals it is happening. Mm -hmm. Guys are just bringing uh, uh, you find many Asians from India now they've become but you'll find them writing the card uh, doing mm -hmm. the doing the jobs that Kenyans can do yes. that is a thing if the government is serious about employment then we have to look at that then you look at the Chinese it is even worse you'll find cooks you'll find those are jobs Kenyans can do okay. and anyway I will quote Malema even though it was very harsh mm -hmm. but I looked at that and I said Indeed, Malema is sensing us something. That you can't come in our house 
And you tell us because you're doing, you're doing for us roads because we are paying through World Bank, through what so you're tendering like any other business investor. Mm -hmm. So it is not free money you've brought into anybody's country. It is money that this country is going to pay you back. So you can't come. You tell us we have to learn your language so that we understand each other. No, mm -hmm. you must learn our language so that we understand mm -hmm. you. Okay, uh, and, and of course and it has a lot to do with language. Even this email, yes. I think uh, yes. it's just... And that is why we are having that challenge. Yes, some of these problems come because of uh, just how well we can use the English language. Mm. Yes. And probably if at all someone else was to write that email, the situation it would have been very, very different. different. Maybe say target expatriates. Maybe yes. that's Good. what they meant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the discussion with regard to those uh, accusations of racism against Chandarana Supermarket. And of course, it will continue being one of the biggest discussions this week. Uh, because now, Governor Mike Sonko has cancelled licenses for all Chandarana Food Plus supermarkets following those claims. Uh, we're yet to see now what will happen after that. The other big discussion this morning has to do with an interview granted uh, to NTV by uh, Chief Justice uh, David Maraga. And uh, one of those issues that came out, of course, was uh, coming from uh, the kind of uh, press briefing, uh, the press conference he had uh, he held uh, earlier in the week, where he complained that uh, the judiciary's budget had been greatly affected. Yeah. Uh, what they had requested for, uh, the ceiling was actually set at half almost half the amount they had requested for, and then they were eventually given much less. Uh, they had requested for about 32 billion shillings. Mm. Uh, the ceiling was set at uh, 17 or uh, 19 mm. billion, but they actually only got 14 billion shillings. You mm. served the chi as a chief registrar mm. of the judiciary for a while. For the chief justice to actually come out, hold a press conference, and talk about these things, mm. it must have been serious. Uh, mm. But as the chief administrator at that time, mm. how big of a problem have you ever encountered in as far as the judiciary's budget is concerned? Mm. Um, I think I, I understand uh, the chief justice's frustration. And uh, anyone who's run an institution knows how frustrating it is that you make budget requests and you don't get it. But I think um, probably the chief justice might have spoken too early. Because the way the budget making process uh, was this year, because of the big four agenda, it was not easy to meet all the requirements of all the institutions uh, that had put in requests. And, uh, but remember how it works it is that uh, not everyone within that sector, the justice and legal sector, is going to, the governor's justice and legal sector is going to spend all their money. So it's not the end of the road. It is very possible to come back uh, to go back to Treasury, negotiate, and have the supplementary boat brought to Parliament, if you can justify that you indeed need the money and that the money is mission critical. Has this happened before? Yes, it has happened before. I remember um, when I, ju I joined the judiciary, they had a very low budget, but the budget went up to $16 billion. Uh, But I remember in the first year, one of the things I did at the beginning was return back $2.2 Because at that time, I felt that we, do, we didn't have the drawings for the buildings, we didn't have the designs, we had a sort of the procurement process and we were not going to be able to absorb it in nine months. Remember the absorption cycle in government is just nine months. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about uh, that you have 70 projects, construction that are ongoing, it may not be that you will complete the, all of those in the financial year. And remember that's why they are called budgetary estimate. Mm -hmm. It's an estimate. If you in fact spend the money you come back and say, actually, that was an estimation of what we intended to do. We have actually seen that we require more money. Yes. Mm -hmm. And remember, the, the team at Treasury sit every week. So they are able to, rec they are always reconsidering requests. Mm -hmm. So the best option is actually to go back and negotiate with Treasury. Not even make a phone call, walk there. I used to spend hours at Treasury negotiating them. And sometimes they will tell you, Okay, this is the amount that we have. And you know, Kenya, that at that time, the government was collecting two billion a day. So what happens is if there is a teacher's uh, strike, for example, I mean, the, there was the teachers required 14 billion mm -hmm. for their b increase. Then the government, imagine the government has to collect that money over a period of 14 days. But days. even then, do they have 14 days because they have to pay for other mm -hmm. things? So what usually would happen is that they would come back and renegotiate and say, do you need to pay for this now or you can pay for it later? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can start you can stagger your yes. programs. So I no, I, I don't think any hope is in fact lost. 
And because the judiciary is a, an arm of government, an independent of government, it's very easy for them to come back and negotiate. And the constitution now changed that uh, parliament is able to, re to look at the supplementary every two months yes. now. So it's not like before whether you have to wait for the half year mm -hmm. but, but, but estimates. Uh, granted, uh, from 32 billion to 14 billion, that's actually less than half. Uh, don't you think no, they didn't have 32 billion before. That, that, that's that's what they had requested for. That's what they had uh, requested. Given the kind of uh, projects they are working on. Everyone requested those kind of amounts, mm -hmm. but uh, not everybody did get. I know this partic this year particularly, Absolutely. and I must say, I watched the budget making process this particular uh, this time in Parliament, and it was extremely elaborate. Mm -hmm. I know that there was consultations with various uh, agencies. And remember, the, the justice sector has their ceiling. So they all have to stay within that ceiling. Mm -hmm. So Attorney General's Office, EACC, IEBC, uh, Solicitor General, DPP, all of them are getting money from the same basket. Okay. So if you give 132 billion, then it means there'll be nothing to the Attorney General, nothing to the DPP, and nothing to the other. So sometimes you're told you have to share this cake. Mm -hmm. You have no choice. And you share it at that time. <coughs> If the others don't spend their money, it can be reallocated mm -hmm. to you within the okay. sector. So I'm quite hopeful. It's not the end of the road for the judiciary. And, well, um, and they, 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 I don't think they were getting 32 billion at the beginning. I think the highest they've gotten was about 16. And, and that's where the ceiling yeah, 16 had or 17 uh, but, billion. But, but when you see the Chief Justice coming out publicly to actually say this time around there's problems, uh, we're not going to be able to deliver service, definitely. Uh, he, he appears to be delivering a genuine concern. Uh, of course, the National Assembly, of which you are a member, has been accused of uh, also having issues with the judiciary and probably trying to fight the judiciary through this budgetary allocation. Do you agree with that? I do not agree because I sit in the budget committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, being, uh, you know, I've been in parliament before. I know when people uh, uh, quote-unquote punish uh, an institution. I know where there was a time that parliament was not happy with the judiciary, so it retained uh, about 100 million. Maybe that's the time Gladys was, mm. uh, was there. Mm. But this time, that was not an issue. Uh, but, but, if but you remember, when, when we were dealing with the budget, it was after. But parliament is able to punish the judiciary through that. Uh, well, sometimes parliament can do that. Yes. But I can tell you this time, that was not the issue. We were doing this budget after the handshake. Mm. So that was not actually an issue. It was not, definitely it was not an issue in mm -hmm. budget committee. It was not an issue when the budget came uh, to the whole house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one, one thing we are forgetting is that we've come from uh, a long protracted uh, period. Mm -hmm. And uh, our budget is uh, based on, uh, you know, what we expect to receive. Mm -hmm. And uh, from, you know, projections that we have, uh, a lot of the institutions got a cut. And remember... Even members of parliament have interests mm -hmm. in uh, the judiciary budget. Mm -hmm. I, for instance, have um, an interest in the Mbita uh, court being completed. I have an interest in Homer Bay High Court being completed. Mm -hmm. And I pushed um, for, for those institutions and we are not able to get what we wanted. So definitely it had nothing to do. With the, with the parliament yes. trying to punish the judiciary? Well, it's easy. The, the members of parliament here say it's a simple issue. Just go negotiate. But for a man of uh, the CJ status to actually come out and address the public and say there is trouble and we are not going to be able to do this, he cannot do that without thinking that about the other possibilities of negotiating. Uh, do you think, just like uh, Governor Mike Sonko, that the CJ also just rushed to do that? <laughs> No, I won't say he rushed, but at the same time, I will say, I mean, uh, I was also in the finance committee, mm -hmm. and uh, there are a few things that I always ask when we are doing also this budget, because for, for fine, you have a challenge, the, you've cut your budget from 32 billion to, I don't know, back to 17 14 or 14. Yeah. The first thing Parliament will ask you, is your itemized budget, which I know all these institutions have refused completely, completely to bring mm -hmm. itemized budget so that you convince this is more critical. This is my mobile uh, uh, quotes that I will use and they are costing me this. And then 
you come also with your unconditional uh, grant that you're also getting on this side. So the parliament is not also that, uh, it understands that in these budgets we have also institutions that are getting support mm -hmm. from outside. I know government uh, really uh, took most of the support mm -hmm. from uh, what they used to get from donors. That is something now they need to renegotiate and say, w uh, you took away our money through donors and therefore this is what the donors used to give us and this is what it used mm -hmm. to do in an itemized way this is what i'm looking for but i'll say the same the see uh, the the registrar just needs go to, to, to just go back to uh treasury sit down with um, the whole team of treasury mm -hmm. and say these are the cases that we feel because also Kenyans will, we will complain, we will say yes, uh, that, but we are also asking ourselves, what is the case of 1987, 89 doing still in court? Mm -hmm. Why? We should be saying the five years are cases of the, but uh, we have been giving you this money and mm -hmm. our case has been there since 1987. Yes. The parents have gone, the grandparents have gone, and maybe these were issues of land, issues of, and they are the ones that are stuck in those mm -hmm. courts. So even when you tell Kenyans that we want now 32 billion, and then again, Kenyans, those who are in court, are wondering, I have been here for 15 years. Mm -hmm. What is this? Okay. So you can't come back and say it is parliament that has made you not to clear these ones of 1987, 1988. Mm -hmm. And some you have to be strict and just tell the, if there are family issues, yeah. try and sort it out for them and even push them now out from court. And but you also, you also notice actually most of the budget that he's talking about is related to development. Yes. It's not recurrent, so yeah. it, it shouldn't affect uh, the work of the judiciary. And again, if you see from, uh, from what I see in the papers, he says he does not, and uh, he has concern about money men who don't take his calls. Mm -hmm. uh, parliament is not in the category of the money man. So I guess his frustration. Mm -hmm. as well. uh, yes, but really for him to use that terminology, mm -hmm. I think his concern could be stemming from uh, treasury. <laughs> treasury. So yeah. maybe if there are people who still have sar grapes, it could mm -hmm. be treasury. Okay. But I can assure you, Parliament is a fairly politically dynamic area. We are, we are the home of politics. Mm -hmm. So we are very politically dy <laughs> dynamic. We know uh, seasons. We, yes. we follow the, we follow the, uh, the ecclesiastic uh, ecclesiastic uh, <laughs> no 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 i'm just saying that it should be relaxed mm -hmm. that uh, after the handshake uh, there are no sag grapes okay. uh, not necessarily <laughs> too much sag grapes from <laughs> yeah. parliament if you are if you are the uh, registrar of the judiciary would you mm. have uh, advised or mm. uh, the cj to probably hold off the press conference first yes. and try at other means yes i would because I think, first of all, uh, the, the Parliamentary Budget Office has one of the finest finance brains oh, that yes. I've seen in this country. Mm. And I've worked for a long time in government. They, go, they sit with your... The judiciary has a desk officer in Treasury. Then there is the Parliamentary Budget Office, who are the advisors of the committees. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's not like the committee just decides... You, mm -hmm. you know, so we have experts who advise us as members and sit and go through. So usually, they would already be advised by Treasury that this is the maximum we can give. Mm -hmm. And the budget the committee has to work within that. But remember, before everything goes to the budget committee, each committee, like they would come to Justice and Legal mm -hmm. Affairs first, and then Justice and Legal Affairs will work with them, thrash through it, sit with the advisors from the budget, parliamentary budget office, treasury will be present, and then it's sent to the budget of the budget committee. The okay. budget committee then has to look at overall what the country has. And I've never seen a situation where the government has, uh, has excess money. They are always trying to, mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 I mean, they are trying to live within a strict budget, just like you would at your own, okay. at your own home. And so I think uh, they, and, I, and, and you know, you, when you sit with Treasury, they will even help you on dealing with inefficiencies. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and I remember during my time, one of the inefficiencies was the circuit courts, where the judges kept moving mm -hmm. to hear cases. But the Treasury said, why don't you then split the court, have more judges, and have one permanently in Mombasa, one permanently in Eldoret, one permanently in, uh, in Kisumu, then that way, all these traveling with the drivers, with the, the clerks, clerks, per diems, hotel bills, etc., was well, cut down. Okay. Yeah, so okay. They, 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 they also help you with help dealing with inefficiencies. Okay, time now for a break. Uh, when we come back, we take a look at other headlines, political this time around. Uh, Moses Otango, the Fort Kenya party leader, says he is now the last man standing in the opposition. Easy, really. We'll be looking at that. Remember, 
Waihiga Mwaura also has an interview with Archbishop uh, Jackson Olesa Pete of the Anglican Church. Do stand by for that right here on Daybreak. You can also send him some of the questions on uh, Twitter at Citizen TV Kenya. Uh, use the hashtag Daybreak. You can also tweet Waihiga at Waihiga Mwaura. Let's now take a break.